Welcome back to another episode of EIF Asks MEPs, a series of interviews to hear from MEPs who are political members of the European Internet Forum on important issues of the digital policy agenda they're working on. Today, we are very pleased to welcome our steering committee member, Eva Kaili, MEP from the S&D Group uh, from Greece to discuss artificial intelligence and its regulation. Welcome, Eva. Thank you for having me. Eva, you're a member of the Committee on Industry, Research and Energy of the European Parliament, and you're a substitute of the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence in a Digital Age, as well as the chair of the STOA panel. Your work focuses on new technologies such as AI. So yes, I'm working a lot on artificial intelligence and emerging technologies as uh, we try to base our legislation on uh, specific scientific data. This is the task of STOA and we have launched the Center for Artificial Intelligence to collaborate mainly with the biggest organizations, international ones, like OECD, um, to discuss uh, agreements on common standards that AI should, uh, should follow and determine uh, uh, how we should proceed and uh, I think also this is how um, uh, the Commission uh, uh, directs its work since we follow the definition of OECD for a trustworthy and human-centric uh, AI. Very interesting. Um, as you know, uh, Eva, in April the European Commission proposed new rules and actions aiming to turn Europe into the global hub for trustworthy artificial intelligence. Despite the Commission's ambition, though, um, to make sure that Europeans will trust what AI has to offer, citizens are worried about its rise. What can policymakers do, in your view, in terms of governance of emerging technologies such as AI, in order to benefit from their strengths while addressing public concerns? I think that uh, it's very important to um, amend the proposal of the Commission to clarify the things that they are not uh, specific yet and to ensure that we have a trusted environment we definitely have to um, uh, to have the data act because this is the, the fuel for artificial intelligence to have specific rules and principles and to make sure that citizens will uh, keep trusting the system as they do in Europe because they know we have high standards and we have to achieve the same uh, that we have done offline we have to to translate it in uh, the digital era online. Um, I think the risk-based approach is very important because this would show them that specific applications, they have um, uh, high requirements and uh, obligations from the uh, providers. And at the same time, I think we need to have, um, especially in the health sector and anything that could harm uh, citizens to give them options and uh, uh, also legal clarity on their uh, rights and their options. So if you um, understand that Europe is trying to protect your health, your safety and fundamental human rights, I believe that uh, in the end we will have an environment where citizens will be able to use in a trusted way the artificial intelligence applications. Like you said, uh, data is the fuel of AI and the success of AI applications depend on data access. Do you think Europe is running on a secure and trustworthy data infrastructure? Um, first of all, the European Commission is actually trying to regulate uh, the uses of AI and not the technology itself. Um, so it also tries to bring uh, new definitions and clear definitions on uh, um, how data can be used and um, uh, what are the specific requirements for artificial intelligence systems, the software, but also when it's embedded in hardware, what are the differences there? Um, and and uh, let's not forget that after the pandemic, which acted as a catalyst uh, for the digital era, we decided we need to have more resilient systems. And uh, this means also to, um, to have our strategic autonomy in the digital field, which also means that we have to have control of data. And the governance now is being also um, under discussion. So we have GDPR that already protects our, our sensitive data, but we are about to present a data act where the GDPR for non-personal data will, will um, be decided. 
and part of it, which would be very important uh, to, to have, you know, a trustworthy data infrastructure, is also to discuss about the European cloud. Um, I, I think it's important because under the Cloud Act, whatever is non-sensitive, um, it can be accessed by non-EU uh, hardware providers, for example, US or China. And to ensure that, we definitely need to have a holistic approach into our strategy. So the industrial part also is very important. Always uh, with reference to the European Commission's proposal uh, on AI, we have received a couple of questions from members of our forum. The first question is about the division of responsibilities for providers and users of uh, high-risk AI. Do you think it is sufficiently clear in the proposed regulation? I think we can do a bit better to um, explain who, is is, uh, who will be treated as a provider and who as a user uh, because I think everybody believes that the user and consumer is the same, which is not actually. So user is anyone deploying an AI system, uh, but not for a non-professional use or a personal use. Um, so, and, and also there is a, a definition and um, a description on, on the uh, responsibilities for EU players and non-EU players for third countries. Uh, so I think we can do a bit better, but uh, I, I think what's important here is the, the essence of the, um, of the risk-based approach, that you have to comply with the high-risk requirements if you are a provider, and you have to make sure you, you do that, you have to manage the conformity assessment, and also you have to have a post-market um, monitoring system during the whole life cycle of artificial intelligence uh, systems. Uh, because, of course, as we know with deep learning, which is also included now in the definition of AI, um, the algorithms can actually change the initial um, way the system works. And in the end, um, I think it's very important to understand that uh, we have to also um, uh, care about the purpose of the AI system. Um, so I have the feeling that it's a, it's a balanced approach and we have maybe to make sure that it will not have gray zones. More specifically, on Annex 3 of the proposal, which is listing a broad areas where uh, the intended use of an AI system uh, is classified as high risk. Do you think this list is really necessary? Uh, in your opinion, isn't a good definition of high risk enough? Um, as we saw with uh, GDPR, since the interpretation is um, uh, maybe more flexible and the member states can decide, uh, what is under GDPR and, and how uh, strong the, the, the fines would be. I have the impression that um, it was important to have a list that, of course, we will work to make sure that it's going to include all the high-risk applications and it's not going to create more frictions and it's going to be innovation friendly. Uh, but I think it's also important to understand that it's not just the function that's being performed, but also the, um, the specific purpose of, of the system. So I think the methodology that's there uh, for what is high risk and mentioning especially health, safety or fundamental rights is really important. But in the end, to say that um, educational institutions or recruitment for um, uh, for job applicants and employees, it's important to mention it just as um, an indication of what's the scope and what uh, protecting fundamental rights in Europe means. As we have seen the deployment of AI systems in, um, in other countries where social ranking is allowed and where uh, you can uh, fire an employee based on the evaluation of an AI system of uh, his ability to produce more and more, to be um, you know, more and more engaged in the, in the working process. Um, so I have the feeling that um, in the end the text will be balanced and it will um, also make sure that um, every, anybody that wants to, you know, to participate in the EU market will be able to comply. Eva, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today and answer our questions. This concludes uh, today's episode of EIF Asks MEPs with MEP Eva Kaili. Do follow us on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube to check out the other episodes and not to miss the next ones here at the European Internet Forum. <laughs>